So the first thing that I had to do before I purchased the property was get it surveyed. Uh, the reason you want to do that is so you know where exactly where your property boundaries are. Um, so you know where, you know, when you build stuff that you're doing it on your property. Um, and that's really important because if you don't have that done before you buy a piece of property and you do build on someone else's property, it becomes, you know, even if it's like, you know, a few feet onto their property, or if you're building too close to the property line, there is a, you know, there's an area, um, like, you know, sometimes like, you know, 10, 20, 30 feet from the property line that you can't put a driveway or a building, things like that. Um, if you don't build in the right place, it can become a real big legal hassle later on that you don't want to deal with. So, um, it is expensive to do, but totally worth it. Had a land survey done. Um, and what they do is they, it gets, uh, like insured by the title company when you're purchasing the property. So, if there ever is some kind of dispute, this professional survey insured by a title company takes care of any of that legal hassle that might have happened later. You have proof that you are not responsible. You did exactly what you were told to do and if it, the responsibility lies elsewhere if that were to happen in the future. So um, really important, it, it, you know, especially out in Taos on, at the Earthship, um, I didn't have a land survey in, but I specifically built my house um, kind of in the center, a little bit off to the center, but in, in an area that I knew, absolutely knew I was within the, the appropriate bounds. Um, people out here have told me like, you know, they've had these exact issues where they built too far over and they were off on someone's land by a few feet. and It just was like a nightmare. I actually know a guy that was actually building, building an extension on his house, got halfway done and then had to stop and tear it down because it turned out to be on someone else's property. Um, so got the land survey done. Um, I also had an engineer come out to the property because I think I've walked this property probably a dozen times um, since I first saw it. And um, I find new things every time I go out there. It's 15 acres, so I've gridded it out. I've like walked the grid and I've like seen what I thought every area of this property. Um, but I keep finding new stuff. So one thing I found was um, wet areas. I knew that there's some areas were like a little bit swampy when I, when we first looked at this property back in, uh, October or November of 2013, uh, because I saw like cabbages still there that from the summer, like kind of indicators of swampy land. There was some like moist areas, but I didn't think much of it. Um, you know, I just figured like there was, there was no, uh, wetland delineations on this property. Um, so I didn't think that any of this was a problem. Um, and by the way, really important little tool, the wetlands mapper online. If you search wetlands mapper, it's a United States national uh, fish and game service thing has a map of the entire country with overlays of where the wetlands are. And you can see if there's wetlands on your property or property that you're looking to buy. And if you're looking to like use your land and you don't, you might want to develop an area of your, any area of your land in the future without any limitations, do not buy a piece of property with wetlands on it because those are protected areas. You cannot build or modify those areas. Can't even cut down trees in those areas. So um, my property didn't have any wetlands on it. Um, but when I went back, um, it was uh, April of 2014 for like the 12th time going being there and walking the property. Uh, all the snow melt had happened and there was a lot of rain recently and there was giant puddles um, on the ground. And uh, there's like little streams trickling down the slight grade of the property. And they were pretty, it was pretty substantial for the first like seven and a half acres of the property. The back half was pretty darn dry. Uh, this made me nervous. So I hired an engineer to come out and, uh, and walk the property with me. And I showed him all this stuff. And he was taking soil samples and um, looking at the situation and was able to answer, alleviate all my issues, thankfully. So that's another thing. It cost me $200 to have an engineer come out and alleviate all those concerns. Totally worth it. Definitely do that before you buy a piece of property. Um, 100%. So some things that came up, the puddles, uh, thankfully were just, it was, uh, like a, it wasn't uh, clay, but it was like a silt, well, very, like a very dense silt in, in a lot of the property, which isn't very permeable. So, that combined with like depressions 
um, where water was getting trapped and a whole bunch of like leaves and organic matter matted down on the ground was just trapping this water and not letting it go anywhere. It would just have to evaporate to go. And he was able to uh, take soil samples and you know, his experience was able to tell that stuff uh, without a doubt. Um, another thing we found, the well, thing I, I found recently, right in the front of the property, I just overlooked it many times, was this artesian well, like a 30 inch con diameter concrete cylinder going down into the ground that was flooded like all the way.